What's good everybody? Hiphoplist Daily here with a brand new video. Today we gone watch a movie, a hood copy of Hardball, but not with Keanu Reeves. The protagonists in this movie are the members of the Five Stair Step, a baseball team. The kids are living in a sketchy Chicago area called Little Village, and as the time is going by, they are pressed and bullied by gangs from their neighborhood. They had enough. This led to the formation of the Six, a gang that jumped quickly into Chicago gang wars and later on, into the drug business with Mexican cartels. Today we gone see the story of the infamous gangster to Six. The story of to Six goes back to 1968 when a group of boys started a baseball team called the Five Stair Step. These boys went to McCormick Elementary and at the time the boys were 11-12 years old. In the year 1970, the boys numbered about 20 members and still played softball at McCormick and were now 13-14 years of age. At the time Ridgeway Lords and Latin Kings were growing larger in size and began more aggressive recruitment. This led to the boys having conflict with both groups as both gangs were allies. Around Thanksgiving time of 1970, Crazy Dave and two others came up with a to six name for themselves and the organization was born in that year of 1970. The to sixes were not like other gangs in the area because they did not wear colors, have symbols and they didn't spray paint symbols or represent heavily. They just knew who they were and so did enemies and they dealt with those enemies. By 1970, the to sixes became a little more known around the south side as far as the midway area but they still not a heavily known group. In the later part of 1973, the original to six members began to recruit new members outside of Gary Elementary School located at 31st and Hamlin making the group a little larger in size. In the year 1975 to six was big in that area near the school. By this time to six was hanging out at Sugar Lounge located at 26th and Sawyer. This is when the original to six began to come up with plans to take over the K-Town area of Little Village. The second chapter of the six began in the year 1977 in wake of the growing gang population in the Little Village area. So the T6 gang became active and claimed more turfs in their neighborhood having more sets such as Bush Nation with members like Teddy were known as a case sweet wine, the dude that made ties with the Monty Mayer family. One of Alfonso Yala Sr.'s nieces, Cousin of David Eyal married one of the Monty Mayors named Teddy Sweetwine Ordonez. Sweetwine was from the notorious Monty Mayor family that was known for controlling a major part of the heroin drug trade connecting Mexico to Texas then Texas to Chicago. Monty Mayors were the largest suppliers of heroin on the west side of Chicago since 1970. When Sweetwine married Eyal's daughter this connected the Monty Mayors and the Eyalists together for business. This connected to six with the cartels of Mexico. But how exactly? One of the bigger dealers in the area was El Alfonso Ayala Sr. who operated a drug business out of his clothing store at the intersection of 26th and Kedville called Alfonso and Elias. The two six crew met at the sweater shop owned by Alfonso Ayala Sr. on the second floor to do business where Alfonso's sons ended up joining to six. This meeting made to six gang stronger because of the connections with the cartels of Mexico. The to six crew was supplied with superior firepower over all the other street gangs in the neighborhood, especially Ridgeway, Lords and Latin Kings. So as I'm telling you, Alfonso Ayala's oldest son Tyron joined the to sixes, followed by Alfonso Jr. who was 16 at the time, then followed by David Ayala who was the third oldest and was 14 at the time, then eventually the youngest brother Joey joined. In the year 1977, 16-year-old Alfonso Ayala Jr. The son of Alfonso Sr. took the Two Six name in conjunction with the Two Six crew and converted the Two Sixes into a street gang, giving the organization their colors of black and beige, their sweaters and symbols. This is when Alfonso's 14 year old brother David Eola became a Two Six now that it was a gang for use to. Two Sixes became a major force to be reckoned with, especially since they were connected to the Eolas, the cartel, and the Monte Mayor family. Since the majority of the Monte Mayors resided in Texas, this is how to six as an organization became so connected to the state of Texas and were able to open chapter in that state over the years. So to six got into business, but let's not forget that they're still a street gang and they need their reputation in the streets. To sixes ran into other rivalries including vicious wars with Satan disciples and bros. The Lobos and Artistic Kents. To Six did Ellie up with Sin City Boys and even flipped some of their members into To Six once they became a street gang in 1977. 
in the year 1977 to six hit the ground running as they immediately began rapid expansion as they opened the k-town to six branch and more western little village in the area the reason k-town section started is because the yellow family moved to this area and the yellow family had their clothing store in this area also in 1977 to six also opened up the shy town to six branch right after k-town opened in the area of little village in 1977 as to six was spreading to the k-town section alfonso jr had moved to the intersection of 38th and albany in the brighton park community the late 70s was a time of great expansion for to six and by 1986 opened in the suburbs of cicero and joliet the cicero branch was alfonso jr's idea in 1979 but it didn't open until january of 1980 because el jr was shot to death in 1979. To six joining folks. Despite being a new organization, the To Six Nation were invited into the Folk Nation Alliance in the year 1978 because To Six had allied and started doing business with the Black Gangster Disciples and because To Six now dominated almost all of West Little Village. To Six was also considered a great candidate because at the time they were one of the fastest growing organizations in the city and their connections to the cartel ran very deep at the time. This is when to six took on the name gangster to six i do not know the whole story of how to six linked up with black gangster disciples but it very well may have been for a drug connect or the link may have been established because they did it's for each other like how the relationship developed between ambrose and bgds the death of alfonso jr becoming the legacy of ayala with great expansion brought great tragedy as Alfonso Ayala Jr. became heavily marked being the leader of such a fast-growing organization. On August 31, 1979, Alfonso Ayala was shot to death on a front porch in a drive-by shooting. He was killed at 18 years old. After Ayala was killed, his 16-year-old younger brother David Ayala took over leadership of the organization and this really began the legacy of Ayala. Rivals can attest that David Ayala is what they described as a badass that earned his reputation for being a hell of a street warrior. Another tragedy for the Ayalas. On Super Bowl Sunday, on January 25, 1981, one more tragedy came for the Ayala family. Alfonso Ayala Sr. decided to watch the Super Bowl at Bonnie's Tavern located at 2701 Karlov Ave, which is at the intersection of 27th and Karlov. That afternoon, two black males were spotted standing around on that corner after they pulled up in their car. According to the court documents, the two black males entered Bonnie's tavern through different doors, one through the side door and one through the front door. One of the men was Clayton Rockman who asked the bartender where the bathroom was. A very short time later, Rockman and the other men started shooting as they gunned down Alfonso Ayala then fled out the side door. Rockman was later arrested and convicted of the murder. He is still in prison for the crime. Rumor has it that Alfonso Ayala Sr. was killed by an organized hit by corrupt Chicago police officer named Charles Wilson. It was said that Ayala owed Wilson money, and when he didn't pay, Wilson had him killed. As the tragedies occurred, David Ayala becomes successful. David Ayala was able to purchase his very own home in the suburb of Westchester, Illinois, so he could be near his mother. It was indeed shocking that a young 18-year-old gang leader had the money to buy his own $160,000 home with a swimming pool and Buick Electra with personalized plates that read El Heath. But drug sales helped make that happen along with I could imagine money his father may have left him. Under David not only did to six gun down several Latin kings but also to six was bringing in more money than ever. Conviction of David Ayala In the newspapers and court documents, David Ayala allegedly held a meeting at his suburban home on August 16, 1981 in Westchester, Illinois, discussing a perfect attempt to wipe out more Latin kings. The discussion led to a sighting of Latin kings at Piotrowski Park located in the Little Village neighborhood. Ayala then loaded the van that he owned with a shotgun, machine gun, a rifle and a pistol and Ruben Paloma and James Soda headed to the park where a baseball game was being held under orders from David. The two shooters then got out and stormed the park firing 
firing several bullets into the crowd striking three people, two of them died. Unfortunately the two that died were not members of the Latin Kings but the one that was wounded was indeed a Latin King gang member. By October 1981 Ayala was arrested then convicted of the murders in 1983 and sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. Behind bars Ayala was still able to successfully run the T6 organization all throughout the 1980s and was able to direct street leaders. Ayala was highly respected and feared behind prison walls not only because of his connections bound to six but also because of how he did business and he was said to have more money than any gang leader in the Chicago area. Behind bars he was pivotal within the Latin Folks Alliance and was one of the biggest voices within the folk nation. By 1998, David Ayala was transferred to TAMS Supermax facility in TAMS, Illinois. Now Ayala was fully cut off from any to six orations. Two years later, David Ayala announced he was no longer affiliated with the to six organization, but he was kept locked up in TAMS until the facility closed in 2013. So the to six down it's now behind bars, but the gang is still active in the streets clashing with their rivals. This was the story of Gangster to 6. I hope y'all enjoyed it and if you really did, give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Don't forget to click the notification bell.